My name is uh, Manuel Montes, and I'm a senior advisor on finance and development of the South Center. Many, the recent political uh, changes uh, can in be interpreted in two ways. One is that it is a misguided vote by populations for uh, politicians that are not advocating things that are in their interest. But the other way to interpret it, and this is how I see a lot of the uh, recent political outcomes, is that uh, many populations are actually feeling uh, disadvantaged and uh, unable to protect their interests against the international liberal order. The international liberal order, the kind of economics that has been dominating uh, economic policy in the last decade or so, last three decades. Well, actually what is happening is that for countries like Africa, uh, they feel very much that they need to industrialize because uh, they have come from uh, seven years of high commodity prices and now the commodity prices have gone down. So the African countries want to move out of uh, exporting commodities and they want to begin uh, making their own products for themselves. And uh, the international liberal order, right, which is what many politicians are, are managing to mobilize uh, populations against, actually has rules that prevent uh, African countries from industrializing. For example, the, just to give the most recent one, the Trans-Pacific uh, pas uh, Partnership Agreement among 12 countries uh, in the Asia Pacific, which uh, Hillary Clinton called the gold standard for tri free trade agreements. There's a lot of rules that actually prevent countries from imposing conditions on their foreign investors that will require them to increase the processing of the domestic products so that they can employ more people domestically at a more uh, higher productivity, their own people, the African people. So in effect, uh, the international liberal order, the international liberal rules, which uh, many populations are trying to vote against, right, and which populist politicians are managing to, to mobilize the votes in their favor, actually hurts developing countries in a very uh, big way because they prevent developing countries from undertaking industrialization policies. Well, the, these conditions are like, uh, they, they, they prevent developing countries from uh, requiring, for example, the hiring of uh, uh, managers domestically. They protect the patents of, uh, uh, of, of these international companies so that, this so that the p developing countries are unable to uh, develop their own technology, right? They're unable to uh, adapt the technology, they're unable to, uh, 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 to try the technologies in their own way unless they pay very high uh, patent fees to these international companies. So in this way, uh, these kinds of conditions that are in the gold standard of the TPP actually uh, prevent developing countries from having access to the technology that they need in order to industrialize. Unfortunately, the uh, politicians that mobilize the populations who are against the international liberal order are trying to use a very, what I call, lazy political program of us against them. Actually, the international liberal order can be uh, uh, shaped in such a way that it benefits everybody, right? But at the present time, it only benefits uh, international companies that operate internationally, right? So many uh, populations, such as the, the population in Britain, vote against the international economic order in general, right? Without realizing that actually it is quite possible to have a lot of trade and have a lot of finance uh, 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 movements among different economies that protect the domestic uh, po uh, employment and, and do not require a us against them kind of economic policy, right? Uh, and this is why a lot of the, this is why I think a lot of the elites that are still in favor of the international economic, uh, liberal international economic order are very much uh, shocked, right? But they, do, they actually do not have an idea about the kinds of uh, things that would be needed in order to make this uh, international system work in favor of everybody. 
And one of the basic things that are needed is increased regulation of international companies, of transnational companies. A regulation so that they are actually uh, permit uh, local governments and domestic governments to protect employment, to increase employment, and to provide more uh, uh, decent jobs, more uh, uh, regular jobs for everybody. This is why I'm saying that uh, there needs to be a, a greater cooperation among countries to regulate the way international companies behave. The way the rules are now under the international liberal order is that it legitimizes beggar thy neighbor policies. If the Chinese companies come in and buy out your companies, well, that's part of the rules. Well, I think what is necessary is that the, the international countries, the, the states that are members of the international community, get together and uh, agree on some minimum regulatory rules so that it protects the local population. It also protects the interests of the Chinese companies because the Chinese companies actually can contribute uh, a lot of uh, new products and cheaper products. But at the same time, this is only possible if there is more coordination in the regulation of uh, international companies or private companies that operate internationally. So, and for me, this is a, this is a minimum uh, what is needed in order for companies to, uh, in, in order for the global economy to not create the kind of uh, uh, resistance that's coming out to the populations. Unfortunately, this kind of agenda is not either in the populist politicians' agenda or nor in the, or nor in the liberal agenda. The populist agenda is to say nationalistic uh, positions and us against them, we, we protect ourselves against them, America first according to Trump. And that also will not work because in the end, uh, all countries will be able to retaliate against that kind of a political economic agenda. And the liberal agenda legitimizes or allows beggar thy neighbor policies which uh, removes protections against the local population. One is, uh, as I, I was trying to uh, mention earlier, is that uh, there should be minimum regulations against the operations of international companies. That's the first one. The second one is that there should be uh, fairer rules on trade, especially for developing countries. Because most developing countries are forced to liberalize their trade. They are unable to impose uh, policies, uh, use policies that actually force the uh, international companies to create more domestic value added in their, in their countries. Otherwise, they have to compensate the international companies. And number three, I would say that uh, the, pol the political uh, uh, situ situ system in each country should be more conscious about the communities that are there. The way the neoliberal, uh, the liberal international o economic order uh, thinks about politics is that uh, the productivity of an individual is only his and his alone, right? Actually, productivity is a social community kind of a of a category, and a, a, an individual is, is uh, productive internationally and internationally competitive productively because of the society that he is in. And the, the international liberal order thinks that this is a personal responsibility, that governments have no, have no responsibility over this kind of thing. So I would say that the third important thing is that uh, domestic governments, national governments, begin to think about uh, individual productivity, in individual competitiveness as a social product, as, as something that, that nations build for their own citizens so that they are able to uh, interact internationally, e economically in a, in a productive manner. For me, the dialogue means that the interests of all should be, uh, of all parties that are involved in a particular issue should be incorporated in the discussion, right? Uh, and this is one reason why I think uh, the populist uh, approach to politics is actually based on excluding, right? Excluding some parties from the discussion, uh, encouraging uh, racial uh, kind of, uh, uh, of uh, ways of thinking about the impact of policies on, on people, right? So. Dialogue actually requires that everyone, uh, including those who feel that globalization has not uh, uh, disadvantaged their own th th themselves, 
be part of the discussion. And what in unfortunately has happened is that uh, on the opposite side, the international liberal order, right? On that side, it is only the interest of the large companies, right? What I would call the Clinton-Obama program in the United States, I mean Bill Clinton, right? Uh, the Clinton-Obama program that actually only advantages uh, companies that operate uh, internationally. So, so that's also exclusionary. Yeah? The, the, the international liberal order excludes most populations. It only protects the interests of the international companies. So that is not also a dialogic approach to economic policy making. And so is the current uh, populist approach, which is also excludes uh, a lot of other uh, people in the, in the determination and in the, in, the dis in, the, in the design of economic policies and international cooperation. Thank you.